How's it going, everybody? Mr. Scary Muffin here, and I wanted to showcase a uh, build here for a brewing machine. And uh, I've seen a couple of brewing machines on the U-Tubs already for uh, different methods and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'll link a couple of them below because I do think they're also relevant. However, the one big thing um, that I had against these brewing machines was that they did not allow you to create uh, random potions. They, they were really good at automatically making the same potion over and over again several times. Uh, and what I really want in the SMP world is I want something that I can dial. So I've got here set up uh, different ingredients that are the four main potions that I use, right? We got the speed potion with duration. Uh, we've got the fire resist with uh, duration. We've got the heal with the splash so that you can use those in skeleton and zombie grinders. And we've also got uh, corruption for the heal and the splash so you can make a damage potion if you have a cave spider or just a regular spider um, grinder as well. Don't think damage potions works on endermans. Uh, but basically what happens is it's like it's a dial of potion machine. So for example if everything is off here then none of these things will activate. Uh, say I want to make a fire resist potion. So we're gonna go fire resist plus duration and we hit the order button and what's going to happen is that all the dispensers uh, in the back, the correct ones are going to fire, and then the potion is going to brew. And I'll show you guys behind over here. Uh, so you see the ingredients going in, and the, po the ingredients are going to brew into the brewing stand. And afterwards, when it's done, I can collect it over here with a push of a button. I was waiting for it to get going. Put the fire resist in. Um, the other thing is, right now, I do not have it outfitted with a timer or a uh, detector for whether this potion is done with. Um, a lot of people have already uh, done some similar mechanisms. I'm just going to keep this very simple, and I'll show you guys how to build this in a bit. I just want to make sure that this thing's working. Yep, there goes the duration. It's very simple, very elegant. It's just the way I like uh, a lot of my creations. Very simple and elegant. Basically, you can dial up different things, and if you want the potion again, you can hit the button. Um, there's other ways you can do it to make it uh, mass-produce potions as well, and I'll demonstrate that in a bit. So once the potion is done, it takes a few seconds, you can push the button, and it will bring up the potion all the way there. We put the blocks over because I'm an idiot, and there they are. The potions are in. Okay, so let's take a look at how this is made. Each one of these levers is connected to a very simple uh, half of an AND gate. So basically, how it's built is like this. I'll go over here and show you guys. So I've got that. That's not what I wanted. Did anybody else notice that the snapshot is very sticky with the inventory? So I've got the lever. And behind the lever, I'm just going to have a repeater that feeds into another, uh, an inverted repeater. That way, this is always on. And that goes into this part, which essentially is going to act like an AND gate. And I can, you can probably compact this as well. It's um, not crazy uh, compact as it is right now just because I already did this repeat uh, function over here. The main reason I do that is just so that I can have the dispensers way up in the air and um, that way I can have them feeding into the water tubes. So this is one half of the thing. When we flick the switch it will make sure uh, that it will not send power into into that torch right here. On the other side we're gonna have a constant power source and this is the order button. So basically, this part will be connected to the, the button that we use to make the order, to confirm the order, like so. I guess we'll put it up. Oh, well. <laughs> so basically, um, if this isn't on, then that simply won't trigger at all, and the dispenser won't fire. But 
if I want this ingredient, then the dispenser will fire. You can hear that click sound. I'll put some things in there. Let's put some levers in there. Lever shops. All right. The way that this part's set up over here is very important. Um, you should feed the dispenser through a block. Otherwise, the dispenser will update twice and it will fire twice. Uh, this way, with this block, is very important. Uh, much thanks to Trav for showing me this so that the dispenser will only fire once. So here's the same setup. I just did it six times. You can stack this. You can tile them all the way across as much as you want uh, for as many ingredients that you want. And I have, this is the order button over here. So that just connects straight up right across everything. And you notice I put delays on each one of these uh, circuits, a different delay. It's mainly because I have ingredients that I want to set off in different timings. Uh, these are usually your tertiary ingredients, so you want these to go last, so I put the longest delay on them. These are your primary ingredients, so you want them to go f sooner. Um, and I have them there. They're also set up in the way so that if they do fire at the same time, for whatever reason, um, they will always go into the hopper in the correct order anyways, but just in case, I put the delay in there. Um, it doesn't really slow things down anyways. This one is for the nether wart. The nether wart will always fire. Um, there is no other half of the AND gate for this thing. The nether wart will always fire. And on the back here, I also have the bottle feeder uh, to put water bottles into the hopper as well. Okay, so that is basically the gist of the machine, dial a potion, that's how it works. Over here, I've got set up uh, just a very simple timer. Uh, basically, if this is connected up to your order machine, you can, uh, to your order button rather, it will trigger all the dispensers and it will also start the timer. You'll need silk touch shears in order to collect these webs. Um, but the timer will go down and once this item falls through and hits tripwire, it will sound that everything has been completed and you can collect your potions or it can, you can set it up so this circuit automatically triggers this circuit and automatically collects for you. You can also uh, hook up the timer. You notice that this timer feeds back into itself. You can hook up the timer so that it will mass produce uh, potions. So it will refire the same potion uh, arrangement that you've set up over and over again unless you lock it uh, with a lock repeater or something like that and that's basically the timer issue that I have here. I figure it's easier to just to use a timer um, than to mess around with comparators because I haven't been able to figure those things out yet but I will link a video um, that shows how to use a comparator to resolve whether the potion brewing stand is done and you can use that instead to hook up. So over here I have basically the same setup. I've separated them um, into primary, secondary, and tertiary ingredients. In, if you guys ever build a bigger machine, uh, you'll probably want to split it up this way just so it's easier to tell what you're putting in. And back here is the same arrangement again, um, but basically I just set it up here so that you have the behind the scenes thing and it's much easier just to walk along here and refill all your items as well. Um, and I haven't set up the bottle things yet. I was going to try to make a mass brewing machine which will uh, basically feed the ingredients five times into each one of these hoppers uh, but I was going to try to figure that out later on. That is basically the gist of the dial of potion machine guys. I hope you enjoy this. I figured that this is probably more of what people want in their SMP and single play worlds. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video of course leave a comment below, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye now.